Hello, this is Alonzo from alonzosblog.com. Wow, what a, what a couple of days. This has just been amazing. It's all good. What I'm seeing is all of these people standing up for their right to criticize, their right to expose their personal experience so that people have the information necessary to make more informed decisions. More about that later. I was in Scientology for 16 years, in anti-Scientology for 15 years, and I've been eight years out of both. Today, I want to talk about something that Aaron Smith Levin said in his rant against Mike Rinder, a refreshing development where Aaron appears to have ceased covering up for Mike Rinder. In this video, he calls Mike Rinder, a backstabbing liar. Well, we need a little bit more. We need to know who the senior Scientology official was that ordered Lisa Marie Presley to intimidate Jane No. Number 1. We need a bunch of other very specifics that it may be that you know, Aaron, about Mike Rinder. And you need to start telling those. You need to start exposing what you know that has to do with the important things regarding Scientology. When you cover up for Mike Rinder, you're covering up for Scientology. So... This is a point I want to make about Aaron Smith Levin that he says at around 1421 in his video yesterday. Here's Aaron. It is, of it course, is always cool. unfortunate or inconvenient or whatever when former members start discussing each other in negative ways instead of discussing Scientology in negative ways. It's unfortunate and inconvenient because some people find it distasteful. But to act like there's something inherently wrong with it is also dishonest. OK, um, to act like no one is allowed to call anyone else out on stuff because, oh, geez, it hurts the movement. It doesn't hurt the movement, guys. The Holy crap. Do you realize what he is saying here? Now, it, it may sound to you like I'm just being butthurt that I got all this cyberbullying uh, because I was exposing Mike Rinder the whole time. And Aaron was with a group of tribal ninnies and flying monkeys who were doing whatever they could to silence me, to cyber bully me into silence, to assassinate my character, to discredit me. But it's not just me. Many critics were silenced. And it was my head that was put on a pike for everyone to see. This is what happens to you if you expose Mike Rinder. This is what was going on, and Aaron was a huge part of it. I've shown in earlier videos just a slight fraction of what Aaron was involved in, things that I could find with his name on them. The movement, the movement goes on. It is actually very healthy for us to be able to call each other out on stuff. Guess what, guys? We're not in a cult anymore. Do you hear what he just said? Okay. I've been saying this for at least 14 years, and this is Aaron now admitting this after all the character assassination and cyberbullying that he has run and his tribal ninnies and his flying monkeys have run on me and my friends and others who had the courage to try to expose Mike Rinder. And for years and years and years, and I've been a part of this effort for years and years and years, there are people who have, um, you know, very inconveniently had concerns about Mike Rinder who have been told, you know, that's just, ah, that's not very helpful. Just, my involvement on the Aftermath Foundation board put me in that position of also wishing that people who had concerns about Mike Rinder would just be quiet about it because what, what, well, it, I, I, I work with the guy. It, I, I mean, I, I'm saying this realizing I'm, I'm, I'm sort of talking about a, a weakness in me. Like it was very inconvenient for me to uh, be friends with Mike, be working with Mike. Mike worked for me, actually. I mean, like I employed Mike Rinder. Plus, we worked together on the Aftermath Foundation board. So if people came to me with concerns about Mike Rinder, it's like, what am I supposed to now be everyone's messenger and go to Mike and be like, well, Mike, this person's upset with you and that person's upset with you. Like, it put me in a very uncomfortable position. I'm, I'm saying that because I have firsthand experience and I, I, I can say from firsthand experience that there has been an effort over the many years to just try to get people to be like, can you say that, that, that? Do you really have to be so whiny about Mike Render? Like, all right. That isn't how it was. All right. Can you just really be quiet? Can you just not be so whiny? That is not how it was.
<laughs> it was character assassination. It was cyberbullying. My blog was hacked. Other people's blogs have been hacked. Listen, Aaron, this is Aaron's not so radical transparency here. And I'm not saying this because I'm butthurt or that I have a hate boner for Mike Render. No, I'm saying this because covering up for Mike Render is covering up for Scientology. That's why I'm saying this. And when Aaron was covering up for Mike Render, which he is now admitting that he was, he wasn't only just covering up for him, he was attacking people that were exposing him and, and assassinating their characters and making them and banning them from all kinds of places on the internet, making them silenced. See? So let me just say that it is so positive that so many people are coming out saying, listen, it's not an OSA program to criticize people. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to tell you why it's not an OSA program. This is another post that I wrote many, many years ago, probably 2017. I can tell by the, yeah, 2018, November of 2018. So I wrote, does anti-Scientology deserve any criticism? And I tell a story about who I am. So back in the 80s, when I was executive director of the Scientology mission in Peoria, Illinois, I wrote high crime reports on David Miscavige and every top executive in Scientology. And I FedExed them, each of them, their own copies. I did that in 1988. I discovered that David Miscavige raised the prices for Scientology services four times higher than L. Ron Hubbard said they should be. It's forbidden to go against LRH policy in Scientology. It's a high crime. And since no one could afford the price of auditing in Peoria to go clear, I thought it was my duty to criticize David Miscavige and the rest of church leadership. What happened to me in the church after that is a story I will tell later in a blockbuster entitled Naive Goober, my story from the bottom of Scientology. This is just to let you know that this is my view of criticism. L. Ron Hubbard taught Scientologists that criticism was an attempt to destroy you. Like so much else, L. Ron Hubbard was wrong about criticism. Criticism is the recognition of a standard, an expectation, or an ideal. When a person or activity isn't living up to these, one should point it out so the person or activity can get back on track. During all three seasons of Leah Remini's Scientology in the Aftermath, Leah Remini and Mike Rinder have sought to make anyone who criticizes them out to be a Scientologist. Because who could possibly criticize the holy work that they are doing but a Scientologist? When Leah Remini lies about Scientologists believing in pedophilia to the Hollywood Reporter, should that be criticized? When Mike Render lies about Shelley Miscavige being missing, when he was there when David and Shelley Miscavige separated and has known exactly where Shelley is, all while telling people she was missing, should that cynical manipulation be criticized? If a person criticizes these anti-Scientologists for lying like this, does that mean the critic must be a Scientologist? Do you have to be a Democrat to criticize Donald Trump? No, that's two-pulled thinking, the logic of fanatic tribalism. And yet so many people believe no anti-Scientologist should ever be criticized, and those who do criticize them should be attacked and even fair-gamed. This is the very same tribalism that Scientology runs on. If it's wrong when Scientology does it, why is it right when anti-Scientologists do it? Anti-Scientology needs to be criticized. The Church of Scientology has not been charged with even one crime in the U.S. since 1979. And David Miscavige is still in power doing whatever he wants to Scientologists. I've watched this impotence and ineffectual hysteria for 20 years. Someone should say something. So this is what I got creamed for. And others, other critics who were saying the same thing about Mike Grinder, they got creamed and shuddered into silence too. So it's not just my butt hurt here, okay? This is important. We have not produced one criminal indictment on Scientology. Criminal indictments produce forensic accounting. They produce 
penetrative search warrants that no one can not comply with? Yes. The answer is, does anti-Scientology deserve any criticism? Yes, it does. So uh, Aaron himself also deserves criticism. And the reason I do this is because he has such a huge audience and he raises so much money out of that audience that you need to know, you need to have informed decision making when you're clicking that little dollar sign at the bottom of YouTube and sending Aaron money. You need to have this information. You can still send him money after you have this information, but you need to be making informed decisions. I want criminal indictments on all of the senior Scientology officials, whether they are still in Scientology or whether they are out. Criminality has nothing to do with one's religion. Victims of criminality need to see justice. One of the ways that this movement has completely gone off the rails is to make heroes out of whistleblowers, to make heroes out of people who are not the victims. See, anytime you take your attention off of victims, you lose perspective. Keep your attention on the victims. By continually remembering the victims, everything stays in perspective. By making Mike Rinder into a hero who must be defended, you lose perspective. And that's what Aaron did when he was on the Aftermath Foundation. They were all, we're all heroes. We're the heroes that are saving everyone. So support us, you know, love us. And in the meantime, you don't know about the stories of the people who came to Scientology in the Aftermath and actually filmed episodes and Osa found out that they'd filmed episodes and then they were fair gamed and their families disconnected from them. And then the episodes were never aired. I know one girl, 18, 19 years old, who ended up in the hospital with a dangerous case of depression after she did an episode with Scientology in the Aftermath and they never aired the episode and her family disconnected from her and the fair game started on her. A dangerous case of depression. So these stories must be told, especially to people who are considering donating to this charitable enterprise. If you hear these stories and you put them in the perspective you want to put them in and you still give money, that's totally fine. But you need to be informed about where you spend your money. So. That's what I have to say about all of this. I hope it has gotten across to people that it's not just me being buttered. There's a much wider, way more important point to be made. And I hope I made it. Over and out.